there's always a reinvention. I mean, there's been a huge reinvention in media. There's been a huge re reinvention in the music industry, yeah. uh, the way touring works. Look at the rise of these VIPs that are happening. I mean, everybody has these VIP packages and these upcharge things. Mm -hmm. uh, artists that I talk to that are doing these live streams, they're making the same amount of money in the VIP post show and the merch they're selling than they are in people buying the regular tickets. So Whoa. people figure it out. Do you think that some of those VIP packages are too expensive? You're talking about, I'm t you mean the online stuff or when yeah, things are normal? For the, the, for the actual streaming. I haven't seen enough of them to know what they're charging for them. I mean, um, and Kiss is charging $2,000 almost. Who is? Kiss is charging. There's a package that I believe is about $1,000. <laughs> well, that's Kiss. I mean, Kiss <laughs> always sets the bar when it comes to charging money, let's be honest. Yep. But, but here's what I'd say on that, Cassius. So you can, whether it's a price of a concert ticket or a T-shirt or a stream or a VIP, I say this all the time. You know, I had a concert promoter on my show named Danny Zalisco the other day. He's been promoting concerts for 40 years. Wow. He came on my show. He said, look, these prices are set at the end of the day by the artist. Don't let anybody fool you. Okay. Hmm. And as he said the same thing I've been saying forever. If you want it to change, don't buy it. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you buy it, you are signing off on you being okay with the price. So if there's some exorbitant, ridiculous VIP package, it's not tailored for everybody. It's tailored for people who have disposable income and are willing to buy it. But, you know, I got a ton of outrage calls when Guns N' Roses first announced their reunion four years ago, five years ago, because of the price of tickets. Mm -hmm. And I said to my audience, you know what? If, if you want it to change, I know you want to go to the show, but don't buy the ticket. Because yeah. if those shows go on sale and half of the t tickets remain unsold, guess what? They're going to adjust prices. Well, those shows went on sale and they were gargantuan successes initially and most of them were all sold out. So you can't say somebody overpriced something if people are willing to buy it. And here's the other part of it. StubHub and all these secondary markets, which are really scalpers, if they're taking the $500 ticket and they're finding people who pay 1000 for it, it's just capitalism. I guess it wasn't yeah. overpriced. Somebody's paying for it. They got their wallet out. So if it's overpriced, then show me some, some I guess, some more evidence of that. I mean, I, and that's the thing. It's such a catch-22 because I was, I was talking about this once and I was saying, you know, people are going through so much. They're going through financial losses and then artists are charging that price. But again, there's no gun to anybody's head. It is an offer. And so is a $500,000 car. That doesn't mean I have to buy it. And we don't know what's, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens coming off the pandemic because yeah. in an already oversaturated touring market, you're going to have more tours than ever. And you also are up against a lot of people financially challenged that are going to come off mm. of this thing. So there are a lot of booking agents and art and people that think in the industry that artists are going to have to adjust ticketing a little bit and drop some prices. That being said, if ACDC announces a tour, no matter what they charge for the ticket, people are going to find a way to go. People will be doing garage sales. <laughs>